welcome to video number 13 of Embolden's video tutorial project. In this video, we're going to start talking about tables. We're going to talk about how to add a table to a page. And we're also going to talk a little bit about styling the table. Um, so a table, as you know, is a grid of information. In this example, we're going to pretend that we're adding a staff page and we want to have a table that lists all of the staff members' names, uh, email address, and phone number. Let's pretend we're at a small organization and there's only five staff people. So, to create a table, I click in where I want my table to go. So rather than, say, creating a new paragraph um, or a new bulleted list, I'm creating a new table. So I click in here, and then this last icon in the middle row here, if I have my window set like this, um, is the table wizard. Uh, so I can click on the down arrow and it will bring up this grid and I can select how many rows and columns I want. I can also go into the table wizard to create the table, uh, but most folks find this method a lot easier. So let's say again, we want three columns, name, phone number, email address, um, and we want to have six rows because there's five staff members, but we also want a heading row that's going to say name, phone number, email on it. So I select the appropriate number of rows and columns. Click this and I get my table in here. Um, and I have to do a couple things. So now I have a table and I could click in here and start typing, but I want to style it. I want to make sure that uh, the class is set so that it looks like a table. There's a table style that's defined to make it look like the rest of your website. Uh, so the border will show will be the appropriate color um, and the header row will have the appropriate background, the appropriate font, whatever. However, that has been designed for you as part of your design process. Um, so to do that, to set that class, we need to get into the table properties. Now one could look and say, well, the class name is down here. I could set it here, or I could do the normal apply CSS class up here, which we've had a video about. Um, but there's two reasons not to do that. The first is you need to make sure you are applying the class to the table as a whole. Right now I am inside a cell. If I apply a class, all I'm doing is applying it to whatever text I have set inside that cell so far. Um, to apply it to the table as a whole, I would need to make sure the table was selected, not just some stuff inside a cell. Of course, the easiest way to do that is with our little HTML tool down here. Um, I can see what HTML is wrapped around my text, and I could just select the table element. And now, in theory, I could apply the class this way. Um, we're not going to do that for a second reason, which is we also want to define the first row as a header row. So I'm clicked in here. What I want to do is get into the table properties. And there's a few ways to do this. If I'm clicked in here and I click uh, the table thing, I can go to table wizard or I can right click in here and select table properties or cell properties. Um, even though there's a difference between the table and the cell, as we'll see in a moment, it's the same menu. Um, or I could click in here and select cell properties down here. All of those are gonna bring me to the same place. So I'm gonna click cell properties. And the cell properties are as one would think the properties for an individual cell, so the height and width of the cell, all this stuff. You don't want to touch any of this. This should be defined for you in the style sheet. So all you want to do is say that this table has the appropriate style. So we go over here to table properties to this tab and we want to select down here where it says CSS class. We want to select table. Um, there's several other classes. The table is the one we want. It can be confusing because there's also a thing over here that says CSS class layout. That's a totally different thing. You don't want to touch that. All you want to do is come in here, make sure the table properties tab is selected. You're in there and set the class for the table as a whole. The other thing we want to do is define the first row as a heading row. It's a little not intuitive. Um, this is under accessibility. So it's, again, it's in the main table wizard uh, menu. Um, it's under the accessibility tab and there's an option that says heading rows and it's just how many heading rows are there. So we could have up to six, which would look a little strange. You generally only want one heading row. So we say there's going to be one heading row. We click OK. We now have a table that's styled to look like the rest of the site. It's using the gold, which is one of the main colors, this greenish gold of this site. Um, and it has the gold background of the header. And if we kick in, click in here and start typing, we can see the header row looks a little different than the actual text does. 
So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to continue talking about tables. We're going to talk a little bit about working with them, adding new rows and columns to an existing table, um, and some of the pros and cons of using tables and how they're a little bit different here than they might be used to in Word.